All right. So then I am going to turn it back over to Amy. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. And good morning, everyone. Amy Johnson here in Tallahassee. And I'm so glad that you've decided to join us this morning. Wonderful to see um, so many folks that I know um, joining us um, at 11 o'clock today for the division update. This is something that um, I offer on a quarterly basis just to give an update of, about what's going on with the division as a whole. Um, I hope that as we're going through the prepared slides that I have today, that if you have questions that you'll make sure to ask me uh, during the, this particular um, presentation or if certainly following up with me after this um, presentation is over. Um, we have planned for an hour, but I don't know that it will take me an hour to go through everything I, I have um, on the slides. So, but I, I, I promise that I can stay for an hour. So I will stay um, as long as there are questions and actually could stay longer than an hour if needed. Um, I have asked folks to please introduce yourself in the chat if you open up the chat panel and be, would you be willing to introduce yourself uh, to the group that would be really wonderful um, I appreciate having so many uh, folks join us today uh, for our division update so with that we'll go ahead and, and move forward here um, so um, Yes, there, there's my picture. Since we can't be together in, in person, um, we've got a, an introductory slide there. So thank you, and we'll move on. Um, this is, I am Amy Johnson from the Division of um, Library and Information Services. I am the director. Um, and I, just as a quick a reminder, I sit inside uh, state government within the Department of State um, and um, work with and for Laurel Lee, who is our Secretary of State, um, and um, with the governor, of course, being a governor's agency. So uh, just, you know, a quick reminder there with our Florida Department of State on our screen and, and, and um, the division name. So just wanted to start off the way I, generally start off um, the division updates and thinking about sort of our operations. Um, and right now I wanted to let you know, um, as I normally do start off letting you know about our staffing situation, um, we are currently in a hiring freeze as all state agencies are and as I understand many of the universities are. Um, so our DLIS staffing here um, will most likely not change possibly between now and the next time we have a division update. But um, certainly we do have vacant positions right now and we do, of course, staff and I um, anticipate and desire and plan to fill these positions um, as soon as we can. Um, but we do have a number of vacancies. Um, so we just ask for your patience. If you happen to email um, an address for someone that uh, is no longer working there, um, please uh, forward that email to someone else within the division so that we can provide any assistance you might need. Um, going ahead and, and looking at our next slide with the upcoming legislative sessions, I always like to, goodness me, didn't we just end the legislative session, it feels like? And of course, um, one of the things that uh, many of you are probably aware, um, the governor does have the budget. And so and for some, in some ways, the last legislative session, while it did end signy die in March, um, we are waiting for the governor to sign the budget and the governor does have the budget. And for the state, just as a reminder, our state budget starts on July 1st. So um, we are anticipating getting budget news um, almost any day. But I always like to remind you about upcoming legislative sessions because we are in a situation where every other year the timing does change. And so um, for 2021, we have what we'll consider to be our later legislative session. And what this will allow is after the elections in November, <laughs> Um, the uh, legislative session will come together for an organizational session um, and allow committee weeks to, to happen um, into, uh, into really late calendar year, early 2021 in preparation for that start date in March 2021. Then we move to 2022 and we have an early legislative session January through March. So, um, and then back on the odd years to that sort of later, I've got air quotes here, I know you can't see that later session, uh, March through May. So moving ahead, we'll sort of think about where we are in the state's budget cycle. So we really are, um, almost at the very top of the circle yet once again, where um, we're waiting for the General Appropriations Act, that's what we call the state budget, that's um, to be signed by the governor um, any 
I suppose I should say any minute even, um, in preparation for July 1st. Um, and so we are um, in, at that point and right at the top of the circle. Of course, just like you all though, um, while we are getting ready to start our new budget here on July 1st and next week, um, we already are uh, doing budget development. So the new year will be for 2021, and we are in the middle of budget early budget development for 21-22. So I know that that's a familiar process to you all. The timing might be slightly different um, because of our fiscal year and your fiscal year, but um, that sort of having your foot in three different budget years where we're closing out a budget year, we're preparing to start a budget year, and we're already planning for a budget year um, that um, are, are all um, in process. Um, I did just see a question about um, getting a, a capture of the slide. Um, and we will be sending out uh, a follow-up message and it will have um, all the slides. So Mike, um, and or if you wanna stay on after we're uh, finished, I'll be able to go back and, and, and make sure that you get the screen capture for that slide. So we'll just, just don't let me forget between you and Casey, I know I'll be reminded, that's great, thank you. So looking ahead a little bit to the next slide, looking at our five years of, um, of funding, of history of funding. And in that bottom, the 2020, 2021 budget year um, is what's projected. And that is why it is in italics there. Um, the year we're in right now, 1920, and just, you know, just with another few days left, I've got to get out my happy new year um, uh, celebration uh, uh, items. But um, so the bold is the current year, and then the italics is the year that we're projecting to go into uh, for 2021. Um, I, I will say the reason, part of the reason it's in italics, and many of you, most of you know this, um, the governor does have the ability to do a line item veto. And so um, it is possible uh, that the budget number could change uh, prior to or or with the but with the governor approving the budget, certainly I hope it does not change uh, for the Division of Library Information Services. But um, that that option does remain open, and so that's why it's in italics. It just means it's not finalized yet. Certainly, I, I set honestly set this date in late June, thinking we might have a budget by now, but. Um, uh, alas, we do not, and, and certainly understandable given everything that the state's going through with the pandemic and the loss of revenue um, that it is delayed in, um, in being produced for the current year, certainly understandable. So if we move on to the next slide, I just wanted to give you sort of a side-by-side -side looking at uh, the, our budget categories, um, just really quickly and high level, though happy to speak at length at any point that anybody's interested about the three different categories that the division does operate from. We do have general revenue funds that's denoted as on, on my screen, um, that's for the gray, uh, that's general revenue, that's the general operating funds of the Department of State. Um, and then we do have federal grants sorry, Federal Grants Trust Fund dollars. Those are the monies that come from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. And you can see there, but from one year to the next, the makeup of that, um, of that sort of slice of the pie, if you will. Um, we did have, we are expecting a cut in the GR revenue. And so you do see uh, that change of the percentage in the budget categories and the budget funds um, from one year to the next. The third and smallest, slice of the pie, a uh, budget pie for DLIS, is the Records Management Trust Fund dollars. Um, and those are, that is a fund where we take in fees for training and uh, record storage, as well as copies, that sort of thing. And, and so then we can use those fees to then uh, operate. So that's the Records Management Trust Fund or the RMTF fund. So just looking at it side by side, uh, the current year, 1920 for another, what week? Yeah, exactly, a week. Um, and then looking at next year's um, budget as well, and sort of looking at that and 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 sort of a, a pie representation. If we move on, we'll look at a little bit more. Thank you um, to the to, to look at some specific uh, line items in the budget, which I think are probably very near and dear to your hearts. Um, we look at the state aid to the libraries. This is our public library funding, our major public library funding. Um, and as um, and many of you know, and if you followed the legislative session, we did sustain a four and a half million dollar cut 
um, to the state aid to libraries uh, grant program and you'll see that um, represented. So again, what you see in the bold is the current year we're in right now, ending on June 30. And what you have in the 2020-2021 line that's in italics there is the projected budget um, for uh, that we're waiting on the government um, that we're waiting on the governor, sorry, that, that one, the governor to sign um, for our state aid to libraries. Um, so moving on to our next slide, we're looking at the library cooperative grants. And again, um, in the current year, we've got the $2.5 million um, and then uh, estimated currently and waiting for the governor's signature, $2 million for the 2021 um, year for funding. These are for our multi-type library cooperative gra um, grants and for our partners that are the 501c3s throughout the state of Florida. If we look at public library construction grants on the next slide, thank you. Um, what you'll see is there what we have in the budget as it was passed by the House and Senate as a projected $1 million for two projects. Um, and that's what we anticipate. Um, and that's indeed in the budget that went to the governor. Um, and so we'll find out again once we get a signed budget um, how, that, um, how that plays out. And our last sort of look at some funding um, is looking at the um, projected uh, funds here for the um, LSTA. Um, and just as a quick uh, note uh, here for 2021, the um, State Library Council met together at the end of April and they did make awards um, across that $2.15 million that you see there in the bold. Um, and uh, there are some other actions that the State Library Council will make on the behalf of libraries and on the grant program. We'll talk about that in just a, in a minute, but I'm um, just looking at sort of what is anticipated to be in that 2020-2021 budget year um, for uh, LSTA. And again, for us, the year starts on July 1st, so just in the, next week. So looking a little bit more at some other things going on, looking at some upcoming events. Of course, um, the American Library Association doing a virtual event, um, ALA Virtual, the, um, the end of this week, um, starting tomorrow. Um, and I know, I hope that you are um, looking forward to it as much as I am. I think there are a lot of great um, online sessions that are um, being offered. And so I'm really excited. Um, it's very different, obviously, but I'm looking forward to that. We do have the Florida Library Association Conference um, coming up, uh, anticipated to be October um, and, and in Orlando. So looking forward to that opportunity. And then we've done some preliminary planning around a public library directors meeting in December here in Tallahassee. Did, um, just for those of you um, who haven't heard yet, we have secured a location. Um, uh, the Turnbull Center at FSU, the Florida State University, it's their conference center and it's a lovely uh, venue. So looking forward to showing off that venue for the public library directors meeting uh, much deeper in the year. So just a few upcoming events to, to look forward to. If we look um, at this next slide, I did, this is actually a, a slide um, where I wanna ask for your help. Um, and, and many of you, I'm, I'm sure, assuming most of you know about the April, um, excuse me, the other A month, the August 26th uh, event that is happening uh, as the centennial for um, women's suffrage and the women's right to vote. Um, one of the things that I would like to ask your help um, with on this is that the Department of State is um, uh, coordinates the um, Women's Suffrage Centennial Commission. And this commission um, meets uh, with the Secretary of State and, and with the Lieutenant Governor. And one of the things that they um, we would like to share with them is how libraries are choosing to commemorate uh, this uh, celebration. So if you would um, send me emails um, after this uh, is, this session is over, or you could put something in the chat if you if you type fast enough um, to let me know how your library is um, celebrating this um, momentous um, occasion. That would be wonderful. I will get to share them with the uh, Secretary of State, and and in turn, um, the idea is that these some sort of uh, gathering or collection of what's going on across the state will be shared with um, the women's 
Suffrage Centennial Commission. So very exciting to highlight what you all are doing. And I would imagine that what you all are doing and what you're planning for celebrations may look a little different than um, the way they perhaps started in their planning and the way you originally envisioned um, celebrating this um, event. But um, nonetheless, I would love to highlight what's going on um, in your city or county or university related to the um, Women's Centennial. I said thank you for that. So now on to the Sunshine State Library Leadership Institute. I do have an announcement to make um, that um, um, because of the current um, situation and, and COVID-19, um, we are postponing year 17 uh, to 2021. Um, and I believe there's some um, information that's already been perhaps sort of um, distributed about that on our webpage and things like that. So as a little teaser, I just want you to know that um, the division and our partners at Nephlin and, and Linda Bruno, we are we have some ideas about how we might spend this this year, this fiscal year. Um, and so stay tuned for an exciting um, announcement about, about that. Um, I don't have any specifics right now, um, but just know that I know I want you to stay tuned um, in thinking about that and know that a silly year 17 will be back and, um, and, and in full gear um, in 2021. So um, that's the announcement for that. And moving on to public library statistics review, I wanted to let you know, and I, I have spoken about this at a couple of different places, we're in the process of um, hiring and, and finalizing the contract actually with the University of Florida Bureau of Economic and Business Research to do a longitudinal study of our um, our public library statistics. Um, many of you are probably aware um, that the division has had a hand in collecting statistics from public libraries for a really long time, quite frankly, a really long time. And so um, we are, um, Renee, I'm glad you're excited too, um, that we are hiring um, Bieber to help us review data um, over the last, uh, I think it's gonna be 20 years and sort of looking at what, what might be gleaned in trends and conditions. I'll know more about that as we get back together, um, but we're really excited to be working with, um, with UF's Bieber. Um, for those of you who are not, never heard of Bieber, Bieber perhaps, um, they are the, the group that in the state is um, legislatively mandated to be the um, sort of the, the, the numbers people uh, for the legislature. So they do have a lot of experience and, and um, I'm sure as, as you all do, we use their um, population estimates, their annual population estimates and other documents that they provide. So um, yes, good, Cindy, right. Yeah, use them for statistics reference for years. Perfect, we have two. We, and we're glad to be doing uh, more direct work with them. It's very exciting. So moving on to the next slide, um, Friends of the State Library and Archives of Florida, I always wanna give you all an update. This is the Division Citizen Support Organization as allowed in um, Florida law and uh, Florida statutes. Um, the, the CSO or the Friends of the State Library and Archives of Florida Inc. has been reconstituted and has been together for about a year and a half. They've been very busy as a board um, supporting lots of um, activities and initiatives, including a, a opening reception that we had in Tallahassee, um, supporting staff workplace enhancements and engaging with other friends groups and lots of other things. Um, the, the ask here today, um, related to the Friends of the State Library and Archives of Florida is, are you interested in serving on this board? At the, um, if you are, or you wanna learn more, you could certainly reach out to me and send me your resume if, if you would. Um, but I'd love to talk to you if you're interested in potentially being a board member for the Friends of the State Library and Archives of Florida. Couple of very quick things at this time, um, they do meet four times a year. And at this time we are anticipating virtual meetings um, while we like to have in-person meetings, of course, um, uh, you know, the current uh, um, current time does not necessarily um, allow, of course, face-to-face uh, -face meetings. So um, if you're interested, we do have um, a couple of vacancies coming up. And so if you're interested, I'd love to talk to you about uh, potentially um, putting your name forward for that particular 
um, group. So moving on to the next slide, this is a slide you've seen many times if, you, if you're a repeat customer with me at the Division Update. Um, the statewide resource sharing platform Goodness me, I, um, I'm not quite sure how long I've been talking about this. I've been talking about it for a really long time, but I am so excited to show you this next slide because this next slide is the really important part. That we have signed a contract. Woo! You can hear the shouts in the background. Everybody's so excited. I'm so excited for sure. I believe you are too. Um, with Autographics, and we are we now have a product called Flynn Share It. We have reached out to libraries that have indicated that they are um, interested in, um, thank you for the other uh, celebratory clapping and yays in the background, I appreciate it, um, that we, we want you to participate as well, or we want to be able to give you more information so that you can participate. So um, please get in touch with me. Um, there's the form that just came through in the chat. Thank you for, for sending that through. Um, we would love to provide more information to you about um, how you too, your library system could be part of this statewide resource sharing network. Um, we are very, very happy. And thank you, Zena, for saying that as well. We're, we're all very happy that this is finally coming to fruition. I think it is one of those things that, um, yeah, well, thank you. Um, we, we, um, we're we very excited to, to be bringing this forward on behalf of the state of Florida and working with Autographics team. Uh, Kathy Maloney, Sarah Shaw, and I have been having weekly meetings with Autographics to get this um, to get this set up, we have, as I said, already contacted uh, the libraries who, who initially said that they wanted to um, be some of the first adopters, if you will, um, but that, you know, please do not hesitate to reach out to me um, or any division staff member if you want to learn more or if you want to also be in that sort of first group, if you will. We do have a live, a go live date in the middle of August. Um, so there will be training for uh, libraries who are interested in signing up. We'll, we'll also have some opportunities to talk a little bit more about what this means and what you're kind of um, getting, what, what, what you might be signing yourself up for. And we know that you need you need information before you can uh, get get totally signed up, and we 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 support that. So thank you, Andy, and, and everyone for your excitement. We're really really excited about this. So I'm glad you share my excitement, or at least some of my excitement about this. It's great. So moving on to the next slide, I um, wanted to remind you that we still have our referral ILL program. So if you, uh, if this is helpful to you and to your organization, we still are offering this. Happy to continue to help in this, um, in this way also. Um, so just know that the referral ILL program remains available to anyone that, um, or any organization that uh, needs to avail of themselves of this particular program as well. So sort of changing gears and thinking about upcoming grant deadlines, just wanted to let you know, um, we do have um, in October, we'll have our State Aid to Libraries grant program. That's our traditional um, due date for that program. And Jiminy Christmas sitting here at the end of June, I feel like um, October will be here before we know it. Um, but the, the, the other program that's more immediate, um, and I wanna make sure that you're aware of, although you'll need to stay tuned with me for some more details, um, the Division of Library Information Services has received $1.9 million in CARES Act funding from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. And we are in the process of um, working out and up an application program for that $1.9 million. Uh, all 100% of that $1.9 million will be awarded externally to um, grant applicants. We anticipate having the grant um, application period be, uh, for, it will be 30 days, and it will be probably the month of July. Um, but stay tuned with us. We will get the word out far and wide um, as soon as the application is actually available. I will tell you the, um, the nitty gritty, which you might be curious about or might not be, um, but, but anyway, the nitty gritty is I am waiting for the budget authority to come through. So IMLS and Washington DC, our um, federal oversight agency has said that the $1.9 million is there for Florida to use, but we have to get permission in the state of Florida to uh, use that money. And so that's the process that we're entering in right now. Um, a couple of small things um, about the CARES Act. Uh, the maximum grant award will be $25,000. 
Um, so that means you can apply for up to $25,000. Each organization will be eligible for one grant. Um, the, um, we do anticipate it being quite um, uh, uh, competitive um, as there, uh, this is the only funding that's come down to the state that does have an allowance for museums um, to get funding. And so we've had um, a number of Florida museums uh, contact us about uh, their ability to apply for these funds. So we do anticipate having a somewhat competitive um, application pool once we um, uh, release that um, release that announcement. Um, the the good news is that the um, eligibility or criteria is already out there and established. We will be following our Library Services and Technology Act um, eligibility requirements. The application will be quite different than an LSTA application. If you're used to seeing an LSTA application, we have revised the process and, and streamlined the process to hopefully make it much easier. Um, but the that that uh, of course, you can't see it yet because it's not yet available. But um, the um, the um, just wanted to let you know about the that CARES Act funding. Really important thing for me also to let you know is that the CARES Act funding will be um, available and in place for. Um, um, but from when we award the grants, which we anticipate to be sometime in September or October of 2020 through September 30, 2021. So um, the nice thing is that while um, it's, we're, we're uh, in Amy's words, perhaps slightly delayed in issuing the um, call for applications, we will have um, uh, 12 months to be able to um, have a program activity. So Anyway, all good things to know. Happy to um, take your questions at any point about this through the chat or 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 uh, later. But um, but anyway, just just did want to let you know about the CARES Act program. We will be putting out information through all of the listservs that we have available. Um, certainly, we'll be um, prevailing upon our partners and with the MLCs to help get the word out. We will have a notice in the uh, Florida Administrative Register, which is um, um, a place that we always put grant notifications. So we'll get the word out far and wide um, to make sure that you don't miss the opportunity to apply for CARES Act funding if you decide that that's what you would like to do. So anyway, happy to share with you some information about the CARES Act. I wish I had uh, the information to share with you about exactly the um, when the application would open and when the final deadline would be. But Nonetheless, happy to share with you what I know. So sort of moving ahead and thinking about some other things, thinking about the 2020 Summer Library Program. Imagine your story, great um, great graphics there, great, great theme. Um, so I did want to remind you that the Summer Reading Statistics will be open for the month of July 17th through August 17th. And so if you're used to doing the statistics, you will, um, you will know to look for your login. Um, and and they just want to make sure that you're aware there are some changes to the statistics and there's been a webinar to talk about that as well as a cheat sheet. So know that we are here to help you um, make sure that you get your summer reading statistics um, uh, submitted and on time and including the new statistics. And it's a little bit of a preview for those of you who've had some exposure to that, um, to the summer library program statistics and the changes that are being made related to um, capturing virtual programming. Um, those changes are also going to be reflected in the annual statistical report for Florida Public Libraries. So we do anticipate um, uh, having some of those changes uh, in a supplemental survey to be quite uh, truthful and transparent um, for the um, as they will be reported in December for, for your current fiscal year. So know that those things are, are changing um, and we will um, make sure that you can find the webinar for the statistics. Um, Gretchen will get that information to you. Thank you for asking about that and we'll make sure to get that information to you. I'm sure it's on our, uh, um, uh, on our YouTube page, um, but we can send you the direct link so that Although there's a lot of great stuff on our YouTube page, so I know you want to take a look at that, but but we'll send you the link so you can get to it directly. Um, thank you, Casey, for adding that. The other thing um, 
uh, that I wanted to make sure that you know about related to um, the Florida Library Youth Program is that the Teen Video Challenge is available right now and, and open. Um, many of you have participated with your youth um, in the past in the Teen Video Challenge. And um, so I just wanna bring that to your attention. The deadline for the Teen Video Challenge is August 7th. And so there's more information about that on the um, CSLP page and will be coming forthcoming in the uh, flip forward newsletter and other places so please um, just wanted to draw your attention to the teen video challenge that's um, been something that's been going on for a number of years and I have to tell you I'm always absolutely um, floored by the the incredible um, creativity and professionalism um, in these uh, videos that are submitted so it's really awesome so I hope hope that you'll have folks participating this year as well so moving forward, we'll think about the Florida Electronic Library um, and things that are um, have changed uh, in the Florida Electronic Library. One of the things that um, we have some had some changes to the FEL website. Um, it's now more secure and more um, accessible and ADA compliant. Um, and we have just, we're so excited, have just um, gotten 15 new eBooks uh, for our collections on the Florida Electronic Library. Five children's titles from Flower Pot Press and 10 middle and high school safety self-help titles as well. So I'm just gonna read a couple of the titles. I won't go through all 15 here, but um, so one is Hot Topic, Social Networking, Staying Safe in the Online World. Um, another one, The Need to Know Library, Everything You Need to Know About Stress and Depression. Um, from the, uh, the children's titles and Flower Pot Press, we've got a celebration of mindfulness piece. Um, and uh, Positively Purple, which is um, explores the power of empathy and friendship and building a child's self-esteem. So I hope you'll check out um, all of the Florida Electronic Library, of course, but certainly um, take a, a good look at our new um, eBooks. We're really excited to be able to offer those neat eBooks to the state of Florida. So uh, take, a, take a look at those, and I'm sure we'll be getting out more information to you about those in the days to come. So moving on, thinking about Career Online High School, um, I appreciate uh, libraries in the state continuing to um, offer this program on a little bit more limited basis. Of course, we there is no uh, state funding for this in the 2020-2021 um, budget, unfortunately. Um, but the, um, um, know that many libraries are continuing to provide this uh, through alternative funding and it even sought potentially some um, LSTA funding and, and some may choose to apply for some CARES Act funding as it relates to supporting career online high school. So I applaud your efforts on that. If you're not aware or, or familiar with this program, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. We do have at this time, round, right about, um, we're hovering right below the 800 mark as far as graduates. So um, really been quite a successful program and very meaningful to the Floridians whose lives have been changed by being able to see um, uh, and, and achieve their um, high school diploma. So um, thank you for everyone uh, working on this. And Vicki, I'm sad also um, about the the fact that it wasn't funded in the um, in the budget, Subi, also with you and, and Cindy. Um, we're going to keep on plugging. I mean, if you all will plug along with me, we're going to um, we'll we'll keep seeing how we might be able to support this program. Um, certainly through your hard work and and perhaps again with some state funding. So thank you for for your um, diligence in, in this program and and in all others um, where you're supporting citizens and their personal needs. So thank you very much. You all are an incredible group um, and, and all inspiring in so many ways. So thank you for everything that you do. So moving on and thinking about rule revisions, um, right now we are currently working on finalizing our record schedules um, for the General Schedule 7 for public schools, the General Schedule 13 for tax collectors, and the General Schedule 14 for public utilities. Um, these are the ones that are um, currently actively being um, uh, uh, refined and review, reviewed. Um, I hope that you all are Sorry, I hope that you all are aware that there are um, record schedules that will help you um, make decisions about how long you keep 
um, uh, records on hand um, in your agency. Um, there is a record schedule um, for general um, sort of general use, uh, the GS1SL. Uh, there's also one in particular for libraries. Those are not, neither of those are currently going, undergoing revision. The three I mentioned just a minute ago are the ones currently undergoing revision. Um, I always want to remind you that you can sign up to follow any rule revision process at flrules.org. Um, that where, that's where you can sort of um, auto magically, uh, but through the power of your signing up, uh, get any kind of notice about any rule revision, whether it's our grant programs or these record schedules or, or anything else for that matter. So moving ahead, let's, we'll think about Florida memory for, and I think that this is um, my first opportunity to show and sort of this, um, this is just one of the uh, entry screens for our new Florida memory website. I hope you've had a chance to check that out. Um, it's a great new website, been thoroughly redesigned and um, we think it's really fabulous. Same great content, just a, a different way to, to get into the content. So please take a look at, at Florida Memory um, and see all the great things going on there that we have to share. Um, next, thinking about our table of content service, um, did want to highlight for you, um, we do have some new titles we've just added to this table of content service. Um, we have the Library of Congress magazine. These are just highlighting a couple of the new titles. The Journal of Library Metadata, the Serials Librarian, and Technical Services Quarterly. So if any of these are interested to you, interesting to you or, or any of the other titles that we have, sort of a, 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 an old is new service, um, we'd be happy to add you to our table of content service. You can use that bit.ly link and go in and, and um, sign up and we will send you the table of contents as these journals um, and, and magazines come out. So always a great reminder about that. Also, always want to remind you about our professional resources. Um, uh, anybody that works in a um, public library, public school, public academic library can get a state library card. And we do have not only electronic resources, but ebooks, professional ebooks that, um, that you can use. Um, we um, hope that, you're, that you find these useful and that you are um, uh, using them, um, the resources that we have um, within our collections here in Tallahassee that we are buying and, and procuring with, with uh, you all in mind. So I hope that you're using the professional resources and we'd love to get your feedback on that, um, on those resources. And thank you for putting that um, URL in there uh, for me, Kathy. I appreciate that. Great, and Regina, I think, saying thank you for the, and, and loving the, the table of content service. I'm glad that it's a useful service. We're really thankful for that and thankful for its use and always want your feedback about any of our services, of course. So we'll move forward in thinking a little bit about continuing education. Um, this is a good reminder that there are lots of great places to get um, training at this point. Um, of course, face-to-face -face opportunities, um, that's that's a little few and far between right now. Um, I know that that will change, of course, um, again, but um, wanna, um, uh, we, we, the, the division as well as our partner organizations do offer uh, many face-to-face uh, -face opportunities when the climate is right to offer those. Um, but in the meantime, there are plenty of other uh, opportunities that I hope you're availing yourselves of. Do you wanna make sure that you're aware, um, and, and we are in the process of um, sort of re tooling and rethinking about what has traditionally been face-to-face -face training and how we might offer it um, in, um, in an electronic version or virtual, better words, a virtual version, um, our records management seminars, as well as our um, newly re instituted uh, managing archives and historical records uh, workshops. So um, contact me if you're um, interested in learning more about any of these, um, but I also of course would um, uh, encourage you to reach out to our partner organizations, your, your partner organizations, the multi-type library cooperatives, as well as the Florida Library Association um, and uh, FALSI, the Florida Academic Library Services Cooperative to find out what's being offered um, because there's a, a, a certainly a lot Lots going on right now with um, online meetings and online gatherings as well as online uh, uh, presentations and, and trainings so great thinking about how to stay in the know um, we 
we do our best to stay uh, up to date with um, social media platforms. And so want to make sure that you're aware of, of, of the ones that we offer. And, and, and in addition, we have uh, several newsletters that the division does um, distribute. So hope that you're signed up for those. Um, if you're not, and you're not even sure what we offer, please again, get in touch with me so that we can um, make sure that you're on our mailing list for anything that you would like to receive. Um, so happy to do that. Um, our next update, which the, it will be in October, which feels like forever from now, but um, truly we'll probably be here before we know it, which is just amazing. Um, but anyway, that'll be the next time that we're officially together. Again, I invite you at any point you have any questions, which is sort of the next thing that we're going to, is to um, reach out to me or any division staff member um, so that we can get you um, any information that we know or that we can um, get you connected with one of our partner organizations who might be able to, to help you um, in, in any of the questions you might have. So if we if we would go ahead and um, skip, we we'll go ahead and look at the next slide, which is my question mark, and then maybe the contact me slide, Casey, if you would. Um, there we go, thank you. Um, I, I, at this point, I've been through all of my sort of, if you will, prepared content for today. Um, I am interested if you have any questions that you could put through the chat or uh, potentially, um, Casey will remind us how we do the unmuting, because I have no idea. Um, but we, we can hear questions or um, take questions to the chat, either way. And if you would like me to unmute you, you can click that hand raise button that should be on your control panel. Thank you, Casey. Vicki, I have unmuted you and it looks like you are self-muted. And now I'm not, thank you. Um, Amy, could you refresh our memory about what it means for the people with existing LSTA grant applications that have already been reviewed and scored and that will be also awarded in late July when the committee meets to make the awards for the CARES Act, or has that changed? Yeah. Just yeah. refresh my memory how that's going to sure. work. Thank you, Vicki, for asking that question because um, I should have um, I should have done a better job with that. Also, know that there will be an email coming out very soon um, from the grants office to the people who have applications in. So we'll, we'll, we'll have sort of both of these things. So um, the next meeting of the state library council is on uh, July fifth, and I'm or sixth. Maybe I'm doing this from memory and that's never a safe thing. It's in early July. How about I say it that way until I look this up? Um, hang on, I can do this. Um, so the, the State Library Council will get together in early July. And at that time, what they're gonna be doing is looking at the grant applications that have already been um, submitted and scored. And there, it's July 8th, that's why I'm, I should always look things up and not just, just um, guess, but July 8th, uh, the State Library Council will be coming together for a day-long meeting. And at that point, what they'll be doing is looking at that additional funding um, that we have in place. This is not CARES Act funding, this is additional funding um, that could be considered for those applications that were already submitted in March. And Vicki, if those are deemed by the State Library Council to be um, recommended for funding, and if the state and if the Secretary of State then accepts that recommendation, which are just sort of the formal steps there, uh, then we will be able to get some information out to the grantees. I'm going to say uh, late July, early August, so that you would know that those grants are either funded or not funded uh, through that um, through that process. And that was for the LSTA. Let me be clear, the Library Services and Technology Act applications that were submitted in March. So the CARES Act um, application period will be a different period. We are anticipating it being 30 days for sure, most likely sort of lining up with the month of July. Um, and the State Library Council will come together for a third time. Um, I so appreciate the hard work of this particular group. Um, and they will be reviewing and scoring applications and making funding recommendations. And that will happen in September. And those are for the CARES Act applications that will come in 
I'm, I'm going to say sometime probably in you know July will, will be that application period. So uh, for your application, Vicki, that July 8th uh, date when they're together, the State Library Council is together, and again, the Grants Office will be sending any active applicant organization information about how you can join in on that virtual meeting and hear the proceedings, that sort of thing. Um, and, and that meeting will be July 8th. So I think there might, and I'm sorry, now I'm in my calendar and not looking at um, the chat. So let me sort of get back to that part and see what else we've got going on. Um, Robin asked, can a library apply for CARES Act funding through DLIS if they've already applied direct from IMLS? Sure, absolutely. I, I mean, let me, and let me say, I, I, maybe, hang on, sure, except check the fine print with IMLS. I don't, I'm not aware that IMLS is saying you can only apply one place or the other. We, the division is certainly not saying that. There's There have been quite a number of CARES Act funding um, threads or venues or I don't know, organizations. Um, the Florida Humanities Council has had some CARES Act funding. Uh, there have been other opportunities for CARES Act funding. Um, so check the, if, if you did apply somewhere else, please check the fine print, but I am not aware of any of those funding opportunities where there have been an exclusion which would not allow you to apply in ours. And certainly we, I, I know definitively in, in the DLIS program, we do not have anything that excludes you from applying if you've applied in one of those other places. So thank you for that, that question. Um, and Natasha is asking about school districts eligible to apply on behalf of school libraries. Um, absolutely, and um, what you would wanna do, and, and again, I could send you some additional information, um, Natasha, but this, it would be at the school district level and the eligibility requirements for the CARES Act funding um, are already laid out in our Library Services and Technology Act um, uh, funding uh, application. So you would see the complete eligibility requirements there. And a school district can apply on behalf of the entire school district or on behalf of one school, but the, the application does come in through the school district. So thank you for, for that app, uh, and, and, uh, question. And we've got another question about the Bitly link for the table of content service. So, um, Kathy, if you're um, and uh, can paste that back in if you haven't already. And streams of care funding, yes, that's much better words. Thank you, Renee, um, for sure. Um, how much LSTA money will be awarded? Uh, you know, I should have done better homework, Vicky. Um, I'm I'm going to say it's amount about at okay versus the amount of requests. I'm pretty sure that, and I, I can't, I'm sorry, I'm not able to tell you the exact amount sitting right here, um, right this minute. Pretty pretty much the State Library Council, what we, there would, there are more requests than, um, there's more requests for more dollars than there are dollars to award, but not by much. Um, so um, my recollection is that we've got a little, maybe a hair over another million dollars that the State Library Council will be awarding um, on that July 8th. And again, we'll get all this written out to you in an email. Um, Vicki, as one of the um, one of the organizations that has an application in for consideration, so we'll get you um, more than my just ramblings um, uh, right now. There was also a question about where um, folks can find the list of newsletters they can subscribe to. I posted the link for library developments newsletters, but um, I'm, if if Kathy has links to, to her newsletters, that might okay. be good to share. And then there's also, um, when will the state aid grant documents be available? Um, so the state aid grant documents, the application period does not start until October. So traditionally, and in and, and all of our standing grant programs, we try to open them up two months in advance. So I would say that we're probably targeting August. Um, obviously, part of what we're um, what we're doing right now is is trying to get the um, the the funding um, with a budget. Um, but we are also, of course, working in the background. So I would anticipate state aid uh, grant applications being open and available for you to start working on on August, early August, um, which is two months ahead of the October 1st um, deadline. 
Um, yeah. So that I hope that answers that question. And I'll check the good question, um, Matt, about the newsletters. We will do our best to get a list of newsletters um, consolidated, and I'll put it at, certainly in the next division update. But I'll try to get it into, say, the building success or some other places. And I will, um, I will also contact you directly, um, Matt, about that uh, newsletters. That's a great question, and I should have a, I should have them all on a slide. I, I actually used to, but I. I thought people might got, get tired of the same slides over and over again. So anyway. We also had another question come in. Uh, could DLIS suggest a standard for reporting virtual programs engagement or what metric would like likely be used for fiscal year 2019-2020 stats entry? Yes. And we actually, um, that was part of what I was alluding to. We have um, put together a standard um, if that, um, and it actually, that's what's being talked about across the country um, and in a way to move forward, um, because this is something that's being seen not only in Florida, but of course, everywhere. Um, and if, if you've already previewed um, the, uh, in the FLIP statistics webinar or the cheat sheet that I was talking about, then you'll, you've seen something that will parallel what will be for the annual statistical report for Florida's public libraries. Um, so if you, even if you're not involved with um, the children's programming, you may want to take a look at that. I do know that there will be a specific, um, a specific training that will be happening for the um, public library statistics or otherwise known as the annual statistical report for Florida's public libraries um, that will be um, announcing sometime in the near future. But um, you could take a preview of it now if you're, um, if you look at the, um, what's, uh, as um, Casey uh, put on the, on the uh, FLIP YouTube channel, the statistics webinar, you might get, you'll get just a little flavor there. Are there any other questions? I'm making some notes to myself. Things I need to follow up on. I do appreciate you joining me today um, for the update. And so I, um, I, I appreciate your valuable time and uh, that you came and spent it here um, with us. And um, I hope that you know that we're here to help out in any way we can. Um, would love to hear from you about how we might be able to help. I'm kind of scrolling through the um, comments to see if there's anything else or chat. Anything I missed? Thank you, everybody. I see that people are um, are sort of signing off, and that's fine because I'm I don't have any other prepared comment or prepared co content um, for today but happy to stay on to answer any questions that you might have. But um, if you don't have any questions, then you've got five minutes back. Appreciate you spending some time with us this morning. And just as a reminder, we are recording today's division update and it will be posted on our YouTube channel. So if there's something you want to go back and review, that will be available to you. Thank you, Casey. That's a great reminder. So glad everybody was able to join us. It's like people are pop it out. Oh, oh, and Mike, okay, if Mike's still on, can we go back, uh, Casey, to one of the very early slides? I think it was the slide. Thank you, Mike. Oh, my goodness, I did forget. See? Um, so, I think it's 